What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update. The January window is edging ever so closer, and we've also got quite a few injury updates to tell you about as well. Uh, but let's start off with the January transfer window, and Ali Gold has given us a bit of an update of what we can expect to see in January. And what he said is that Tottenham will focus on quality over squad numbers in January. Conte is happy with the squad size, but wants to upgrade the expendable players to ready-made ones. And he also says that Tottenham will allow Brian Hill to leave on loan in January, providing they are able to sign a replacement who is a more direct alternative to Dejan Kulisevsky. So yeah. What's your thinking uh, behind the January transfer window? Yeah, and that, that's good to hear, in my opinion, because I, I think when it comes to numbers, I know we have a lot of injuries right now, so our squad's looking very thin. But if we, for example, if we had a ready-made replacement um, who's ready to step in instead of Brian Hill right now, um, we wouldn't be looking as thin as we are. Yeah, same again for maybe centre-back as well. If we had um, a ready-made replacement as opposed to maybe like um, Sanchez or something, then we wouldn't be looking as thin as centre-back. So I think that's the right approach uh, to go for in January. But then again, quality is a lot harder to find in January than it is in the summer months. That's the reality because in January, you're either, you're either overpaying for good quality or you're getting... All or you're getting players that uh, teams want to sell. So it's not the best month for buying quality, but I'm happy that that's what they're focusing on. Yeah, um, I completely agree. It's not the best month to find quality, but you can buy quality um, you know, if you find it in the good areas. I mean, obviously, we found it last winter with Ben Tankor and Kulisevsky coming through the door. Uh, that's up there with the best transfer business in January we've probably ever done. And if we can get players of the same kind of quality as that, then uh, I don't think anyone will be complaining, will they? Yeah, but you have to be a bit lucky in a sense like Juventus, for some reason or another, they were discarding Ben Tenkorn and Kulisevsky. They were ready to sell them. In most other teams who have the, who have quality players like Kulisevsky and Ben Tenkorn wouldn't be treating them like Juventus treated them. So you have to be um, smart. And you have to be a bit lucky as well. So you have to get to find the quality, like in, in terms of getting deals done, like Kulisevsky and Bentancur. So I feel we're smart enough; we can get them, we can find them. But it's uh, but you have to be uh, have that bit of luck as well. Yeah, and um, it could be the case with this next man that we're going to bring up in Ruslan Malinovsky, as Il Giorno is an Atalanta publication uh, saying that Tottenham representatives are already moving for the potential Malinovsky deal in January. He is likely to cost around 15 million euros, which is 12.9 million pounds. Obviously, uh, we spoke about Malinovsky all of last summer, uh, but he could be one that could be available in January. But it, it would really annoy me in a way um, if we, if we, it would annoy me if we get him in January. I would also be happy because I think he's a good player. Um, although, albeit, I actually, I'm, I think he's good, but I've, I would rather go for a bit of a younger guy who can maybe fill in on a few multiple positions, but whatever. I mean, I'd be happy to get him in because I think he's good and he would, he would help the squad. But the fact of the matter is, if we really wanted him, we could have had him in the summer. Like there was a, it wasn't a massive outlay. You, we could have got a, a deal done uh, for him. I think it was like twenty million euros, and more something like maybe even um, smaller. It was the same as what they're talking about now, fifteen million euros. Yeah. So. Why wouldn't we, if we really wanted him? Why wouldn't we go for him in the summer? Which makes me think we don't really want him. And if we don't really want him, why are we going for him? Um, so that whole thing really annoys me. But I do think he's a good player. So I'm not going to like start complaining if we sign him. It's just it annoys me that yeah. if we do sign him in a way. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I get, I get it. I get it completely. But at the end of the day, uh, we just need to look forward instead of looking back. And if we can get someone in in January of that kind of quality, uh, I'll be welcome to it. The guy isn't exactly playing week in week out for Atalanta. He's yeah. um, He's been kind of restricted to bench appearances uh, for the most part. He is play taking part in most of the games, but he hasn't played a 90-minute stretch uh, for the whole season, to be honest. He's played 11 games in Serie A this year, getting one goal and one assist. And that was near the beginning, I remember, the season. Yeah. He was started the season well. But so, I, just, I just don't understand it. Like, if we, if we wanted him... There was no reason not. To, like, what was the? What is? Is there any reason if we really wanted him, we couldn't have got him in the summer? No reason. So it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, especially as we had that uh, deal with Hill tied up to go to Valencia on loan so as well. So it makes no sense, especially for paying the similar amount. It makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, but hopefully we can get someone over the line in that position. But uh, let's move on. The last bit of transfer news we have for you today, and that is about N'Golo Kante. Mate Moreto is saying that Kante is a player that Antonio Conte really likes, and Tottenham could rival Barcelona in the race for the midfielder whose contract expires at the end of the season. Mm, Obviously, yeah. uh, the guy has major injury problems, hasn't been able to stay fit for the last uh, year at the minimum. Um, 
Thomas Tuchel uh, was spe speaking a lot about it. Even Graham Potter has been speaking about it, and they can't seem to get him on the pitch. So, I mean, if this guy was didn't have too many injury problems, I'd love to get him through the door. But right now, uh, do we really need another one that's just going to be sitting in the in the uh, injury room? And you just got to be wary about getting cast offs of, from your rivals. I know, like it was like you can argue we got we took Kulusevski and Benzema who were out of favour from a big team, and look how that turned out. But if if they're not willing to give him a new deal, look look how look how many times Arsenal been burnt by that. You know, getting players from a free from Chelsea, they think they can improve them, but they end up being absolute dead players. And I, I'm sure if, if Kante is on the when we get him on the pitch, um, he would be good. But for, it's about how many times we can get him on the pitch, and also there has been a cases where especially in the last couple of years where he has played and he just hasn't looked like the same Kante. Albeit, Although, beginning albeit, of the season, yeah. he smashed us off the park. I'm he? saying, albeit he's had good performances, but it's about, can you, is that, are we ever going to get back to a stage? He's now, what, 31, 32. Are we ever going to get back to a stage where can the Kante we all know is going to be playing consistently at that level? We know he can week in, week out. I don't believe we're ever going to see that again. I will believe you'll get good performances out of him, but I just don't believe you're going to be able to get that Kante week in, week out consistently playing. So for me, um, I think we should be looking at other deals. I, I, I don't think it, it's worth our time. Mm, I kind of agree. But like, if we can uh, get his injury problems past him, what a player we could have on our hands for the next couple of years. Um, and he'll definitely fit the mould of Antonio Conte, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the injury updates now. Let's start off with Hyung min Son. Sammy Mockbell saying that Son could still play at the World Cup with a protective mask after he fractured his zygomatic bone but it depends on his recovery. Sources are not ruling out that Son could be fitted with a protective mask uh, in a view to be playing Tottenham's last game against Leeds in November, uh, their final Premier League game before the World Cup. Dan Kilpatrick saying is that Son is to have surgery in the next 48 hours with hopes to feature in the World Cup, dependent on its, on its success, his recovery, and how quickly he is comfortably playing with a mask. The Korean FA made a statement today as well, and he, they said that we will decide whether his, uh, that he could participate in the World Cup or not after the outcome of his surgery, and we are cooperating with Tottenham's medical team on Son's injury. Um, it's not great, it doesn't no. sound great, does it's it? Not good. It, not only does it not sound great, it didn't look great at all um, as well when he got it. I mean, the fact that it's turned out to be a fracture and not just concussion, in my opinion, is not good news at all. At least with a concussion, you know he's probably going to be okay in a week and he can get back back to his best. But with a fracture, it all depends how bad the fracture is. Um, if it's worse, if you know how how well the surgery goes, um, then if he's playing with a mask and he's risking re-injury, uh, you know, playing with a fracture like that. Um, I know players have done it before, but it's not a great situation to be in. I I don't expect to see him at Tottenham again before the World Cup, despite the rumours there. There's also rumours that it could take up to six weeks, even if the surgery goes well. Uh, depending on how bad the fracture is so I feel awful for him that it's happened just before the World Cup and it's such a shame and it's such a weird injury as well to ha happen for your fractured eye socket with a that elbow from Mbemba so innocuous and it's just sometimes how it goes just really unlucky um, obviously from a Spurs point of view it's really disappointing but from his own point of view I'm, I'm gutted for him that it's happened just before the World Cup and I'm praying that he'll be alright for it because I know how much it means to him playing for South Korea he takes so much mm. pride playing for his country doesn't he so hopefully he'll be alright for the World Cup um, but it's a massive blow for us, and especially for Sunday, because um, he would have been our main avenue to, for attack against this Liverpool team, and with him being out, it really stifles us that bit that much more. So from Tottenham's point of view, it's really bad, and um, from his point of view, I feel so bad for him. Yeah, it's a very bad situation, but I guess uh, the positives out of the situation, that is if, if he is out for the World Cup, then he'll get much needed rest uh, for that second half of the season. I guess from a selfish point of view, yeah, that, that's that, that. I guess if he is out for the World Cup, because it, because it's only an eye injury, so it's not like he's he has to um, recover from like a muscle injury or something. So yeah, he would probably come back into the second half season, hopefully a lot fresher. But well, who knows? I mean, whether that disappointment of of missing out the World Cup mentally might that even might take some time to recover from as well. Mm. I'm sure someone like Sonic will spur him on to do something really good in the second half of the season. Uh, but let's talk about Christian Romero now, as Sammy Mockbell says that Kuti is expected to be out of action until the World Cup begins due to a muscle strain. The Mail is saying that Tottenham are expected to reject any requests from the Argentinian FA to release Kuti Romero 
early for the World Cup. One Premier League club has already turned down such a request. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that request is probably Man United with uh, Lissandro Martinez. Uh, there's been a lot made out of uh, Cuti Romero uh, over the last 24 hours on Spurs Twitter, with Spurs Twitter going quite hard on Cuti Romero, to be honest. Um, and when I first saw it, I was thinking like, do you really need to go in so hard on him when Conte clearly said like he played him through an injury and Conte and he was clearly on his last legs that game and Conte literally said after the game like how dangerous it was to play him in that game we haven't seen him since uh, we rushed him back um, like Conte doesn't usually like to do and uh, we're suffering the consequences I mean the guy was injured and we played him and, and he's got muscle fatigue now is that, is that any surprise? Definitely not um, and I don't understand why people are getting so angry at him for being injured when he did sacrifice himself for Spurs for that game um, so I really believe if he was available he would he would make himself available especially the guy kind of guy Romero is obviously we know um, what happened um, last season when he went when he went off to Argentina, which may, which meant he missed a couple of games for Tottenham, and that's maybe in the back of people's minds uh, now when when they see him um, being injured with muscle fatigue, and they, they I think maybe fans are thinking that he's um, saving himself for the World Cup and he's making himself not available when he could play, but. I don't believe that's the case. There's no evidence, right? It's just a theory. It's just rumours, really, uh, of, of, of that happening. So I don't see it making any sense to get angry at him for being injured when, from what we can see, all the evidence suggests that he sacrificed himself to play for Tottenham in that game against Sporting. So there's no, I don't see any reason uh, and, to be angry. And also, Conte um, has come out and said in the past that even when he hasn't been picked, he's always made himself available to be picked. And and it's up to the medical staff and Antonio not to pick him to, to protect the player, right? In that particular game, when he did play, Spurs didn't do that. But in the game surrounding that, Spurs did do that. And Romero did make himself available to play those games. So I think there's... There's also a bit to say that sometimes Romero maybe doesn't make himself available when um, up when international breaks are up and coming. But I think that's only happened once and people were making out like it happens every time there's an international break. Uh, Kutu Romero is not available. Um, so I've, I've kind of looked at this in bo from both ways, I, I'm, but I'm much more favouring the way that... Um, what Conte is saying that he always does make himself available and um, you know he's a talent for the team and he always puts himself um, on the front line for the team as well so to go in so hard on him I think is wrong to be honest. If uh, if it was a hypothetical say he had like he had muscle fatigue and if he did play there was like a 25% chance of injury um, and he said I'm, I'm making myself unavailable is that would you would you say that's right or would you say no he should be he should um if Conte wants him in the lineup he should be playing i think that um Look, I think if Conte wants him in the lineup, he should be playing. But even I think, if there's a 25 percent chance of but injury, I think Conte should be the one making that decision about the percentage of the injury and whether it's too much of a risk to play him or not. I'm saying and is it would it be right if, if always, Romero sees? You always need to take what's best um, for player welfare, right? And if there is a risk, if it is 20, 25 percent, and Conte decides to play him, then he's probably weighed up the option saying the game's too important not to play him. So you say in that situation, Romero would be wrong to rule himself out? I think he'd be wrong to rule himself out. The medical team would have to rule him out, in my mm. opinion. No, if the medical team just give the information, there's 25% chance of injury, you can take that risk if you want. Yeah, the, but the medical team would come out and say like to play him or not to play him. But I, I wouldn't want to play him if there was a risk at all, to be honest. And we've seen that in the past with other players like why risk him for a longer term injury mm -hmm. when when you can just miss out one or two games you know what i mean exactly um that's how that's i feel that's about the situation um but look people feel like the way they want to feel people want kuti romero back so desperately that's why they're going yeah. right on that and there are like people this. like oh spurs pay your wages so you you know even if you're risking injury you should be make yourself available for tottenham because they're the ones who pay your wages and also the fact of the matter is is like we have a medical team. It's not down on Kuti Romero to rule himself out. No one said that Kuti Romero has ruled himself out. How mm -hmm. do we know this information is not coming from the medical team? We don't. I'm just giving a hypothetical. No, I'm just yeah. saying in terms of this this whole situation, the Spurs a bit. All these Spurs fans coming on Twitter being like, "Oh, he's being a disgrace. Oh, he's ruling himself out. Oh, he's just focused on Argentina." How do we know this information is not from the medical team? How do we know the medical team haven't pulled him exactly. out? Exactly. We don't. Exactly. So I think people need to calm down a little bit. But I think that the quotes, there are quotes from Harry Kane and, you know, he was asked about, um, 
himself and and how players are preparing for the World Cup and stuff like that. And I thought it was quite interesting because from me, it did kind of feel like he was uh, speaking about some players in the squad. Uh, he might not have been, but from me, the feeling I got that he is. And the quote is, I think a lot of players have got it in the backs of their mind, but I think the top, top players will manage to give 110% no matter what. The more you try to think about managing yourself, the more it backfires. So maybe he is assuming that some players in the squad do have the World Cup in the back of their mind and are trying to manage themselves in terms of in their preparation. Maybe, but there's no indication he's talking about anyone at Tottenham. Yeah, um, there's no indication he's not. Yeah, I know, but it's a very generic t quote. There's nothing specific in it. So, I mean, if you want to, you could read into it that he's talking about someone at Tottenham, but I think you'd, you'd have to have that in your mind to be thinking he is, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, but let's move on. Let's talk about Harry Kane now. And um, no, let's talk about Richarlison and Kulisevsky, actually, uh, before we go into that. The standards are reporting that Kulisevsky has been training outside and is hopeful for a return to Tottenham Hotspur before the World Cup. That's hopeful. <laughs> There's not many yeah. games before the World no, Cup now. No, Only three so. games, but um, hopefully we can see, see him on the pitch before then. Yeah, we could really do him this weekend, but it sounds like they're st still not might not be available for this weekend. Um, well, we heard that um, from we heard from our source that Conte will say it was didn't play Kulisevsky on. Um, Tuesday with a view of potentially having him available on Saturday but what Sunday but it does sound like he probably won't be but I guess we'll wait to hear from Conte tomorrow to see if that's the truth or not um, we, look it'll be good to have them available for one game but um, whether they're available or not I guess at this point um, it would help us to, to try and get points but it's not not the be all and end all this I guess because there's only so many little games so it is no, what I it know. is but it would be nice to have them available for at least one game before the, before the World Cup yeah it's crazy because like this Car Carabao Cup game coming up against Forest. Like, if we win it, like we're going to have to come back sooner than everyone else from the World Cup as well, because that that Carabao Cup game gets played before the Premier League game, where everyone comes back for. So it's actually literally like four days after the final. Or is there everyone in that round when, if they win? You know well, what if mean? they win, yeah. yeah. If they win. So, um, yeah, I mean, so it wouldn't be too bad to go out, I guess. But uh, when we need a trophy, you need only, only for every chance you can get. Yeah. But yeah, if it, let's say you can get to the final, then Kane potentially, I mean, I don't know if he, obviously, if we get to the final, I'm assuming though he'll be left out, but he could potentially have to play four days after the final, which would be mad. And like, for the players going, getting to the final, like, how long are they going to get off after the World Cup? Like, are we really, they are can't. They, are they really going to come back a week later? Depend for all yeah for all the people in the final they'll they'll probably get an extra week off I'm assuming but they can't I, they literally can't have more than that because uh, this is a this is this is the this is the business you know look like, these um you can't have like a month off or we have a whole month of games you know what I mean it's even if you're in the final but you know the German league is coming back a month after the Premier League literally a whole month after the Premier League yeah the Italian and Spanish league are coming back like a week or two after the Premier League yeah I think there is a, in January I think they fitted in a week break or something somewhere in the Premier League but it's still a jo I mean it's just this country is obsessed with playing on Boxing Day that's the whole thing we have to have a Christmas we have to have a Boxing Day so that means we have to play a week after the World Cup and it, that's equally as ridiculous as having a winter World Cup as well, forcing these players to come back so soon, and uh, no one cares about these players apparently. So nobody cares about these players, and to be honest, yeah, I don't really care about this World Cup. I really don't. But um, mm, yeah, it's the it's the, the the World Cup that I'm least excited for in my whole life, and mm -hmm. I'm usually really excited for the World Cups when they come around. Yeah. Uh, it's very frustrating but uh, let's move on let's talk about Harry Kane and Harry Kane will be awarded the freedom of the city of London at a special ceremony in January as a result of his sporting achievements so big up to Harry Kane nice freedom of the city and people say he hasn't achieved anything in his career <laughs> there you go look at that freedom of the city and he deserves it you know golden boo he's going to be the England's top, top ever goal scorer he'll probably break it as well at the World Cup he won a World Cup golden boot he He's um, not far off Tottenham's all-time top goal scorer. Um, he'll freeze, you know, he's on his way to becoming the Premier League all-time go top goal scorer as well. So uh, I think definitely he, he's one of England's best ever players. And I think it's about time he gets some recognition. Yeah, one of our own as well. Damn right. um, and last but not least, let's talk about that Champions League last 16 draw. Uh, football data analyst Jan Van Haren has given us some percentages of who is the most likely team for Spurs to draw. Um, so out of the five or six different um, teams that Spurs could face, 
Number five with a level percentage of 14.2 is Club Rouge and PSG. 17.3% you have AC Milan. 17.4% you have RB Leipzig. 18% is Borussia Dortmund. And most likely team for Spurs to face in the next round is a romantic tie for Antonio Conte with Inter Milan at 18.9%. But how... Do the football data scientists come up with these kind of percentages? Um, it's just about who finishes first and second in the group. So because like, because there are German teams and Italian teams who finish top of their groups, it means they can't play the German teams and Italian teams who finish second, which there are a few. There's Frankfurt, there's Dortmund, there's Leipzig, who all finish second. Um, and, for, and for Napoli, who finish top, there's um, AC and Inter, also finish second in their, their group. So because those top teams can't finish, can't play those teams, it makes it more likely that the other teams who finish top um, are going to get drawn against those teams because they already get ruled out. So that means it's more likely we're going to get one of the German teams or Italian teams because the other teams um, can't play them. So that's how it works. Yeah, well, it's interesting, but the like the percentage of likelihood is not very like big, is it? I mean, no. from bottom to top, it's literally only like less than five percent. Yeah, and much. then and then it's important to know as well because Benfica absolutely battered. Uh, oh Hyper yeah, yesterday. That was unbelievable. Uh, that means PSG have now dropped into second place, which was which was unthinkable before kickoff, but it happened. And Apparently it means it away goals that they qualified on. Well, away away goals. Wow, which uh, which is crazy, and that means we we have possibility now of playing PSG. Uh, in the in the not not on will um, be at the lowest possibility. Around. It is, <laughs> but it's still a possibility nevertheless, and that is not a game that we uh, want to be facing in the round of sixteen because you know they're playing very well at the moment, PSG. So not great that that happened, but is what it is. It could be a glamour tie as well if we do face them. You don't fancy taking on Messi and Mbappe? Not not particularly. And <laughs> Neymar and or whoever else. Mm. They, it would have been they, nice, they to get their been act nice together. if Poch was still their manager. They seem to be getting their act together a bit, PSG now. Um, Very good manager, Galtier. Yeah, Galtier seems to be doing a good job. So, I mean, that's not a tie I want to be facing. But you know what? Like, You're going to have to face one of these teams in the next round anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why not just test our wits and, and see if we can do it? Yeah, I guess it could be a glamour tie. Maybe we'll raise our game. But I'm not bothered about who we get in this next round because I know that if we get the hardest team, like we're going to have to face them in the next round anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if we get through this round, then in the quarterfinals, you're going to play. You're going to play an elite team, aren't you? Pretty much. Yeah, I guess. So there you have it. That is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the new stories we brought to you today. Smash that subscribe button and that like button on your way out. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.